Okay. Does that work? Testing, testing. Oh. Yay, I figured it out. The only problem is I can still hear my own voice echoing in the headphones, so I guess, uh... Hmm. I'll mess with it some more. I got some... Some more setup stuff I gotta work on this weekend, so I'll try and get it all figured out by then. But, uh... Yeah, thank you all for coming to the stream, and... I'm glad you're here tonight with me. So how about we make some friends, okay? Okay. Uh, now, I have not played any of the friend sims before, despite having worked on some of it. So uh, most of this is just going to be a big old surprise for me. So, uh, and And I wanted to play it as soon as it came out, but I also wanted to kind of stream it also, so I kind of put it on the at the at the back of the queue so to speak until I was able to stream it but now I can stream it so so hey we're gonna stream friend sim yay all right let's begin how's that whoa uh and we're gonna do them all in order of course you have just crash-landed on a planet called Alternia and staggered from the smoldering wreckage of your ship. You are now completely alone in a strange world. Desperate for information, for provisions, and possibly a bit of medical attention. But most of all, you are desperate for friendship. Aww. Any weirdo will do. Someone's approaching. Okay. Uh, who should we start with, everyone? Should we start with Ardata or Diamond? Demon? Hot Dog Boy? Okay, I guess, uh... <laughs> I mean, we're going to do both of them tonight, but, uh, okay, I guess we'll start with our data. Yes, someone is approaching, a strange, gray-skinned alien clad in blue. Perhaps they will make for a good friend? Dear God. And just what are you supposed to be? I, I don't have a very good girl voice. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Your stammering reply eventually conveys that you are a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in some need of medical treatment. You are also really lonely and wouldn't mind making a new friend right about now. Oh, oh my, mmm, mmm. Yeah, I guess I am too manly, huh? Mwahaha. <laughs> she, she totally does anime laugh. Oh, how funny this is. How very droll. You, you want to be my friend? It's too much this. This thing at my doorstep, wishing to know me in any capacity. The hilarity somehow escapes my ability to capture with maniacal laughter. How rare. You apologize for the presumptuous request. You hang your head, turn around, and begin to walk away. And just what the fuck do you think you are going, doing? Who invited you to leave? You stop in your tracks obediently and turn to face her again. Your possibly broken ribs are throbbing in pain, but this does not strike you as the right moment to exhibit weakness. <laughs> Yeah, she did come up to me. It dawns on me that we have, may have gotten off on the wrong saunter pod. What are my manners? Ghastly behavior on my part. After all, it isn't your fault you seem to be some sort of hideous freak, is it? 
and such a tragic creature cannot be held responsible for such a devastating shortfall of social competence. I would weep for you, really, except that crying out three eyes at once gets a bit messy. So instead, I think I'll be saving my tears for someone less offensively worthless. You aren't sure if she's inviting you inside, or if she just got you to stay a little longer so she could insult you some more. It couldn't be both. Do I have a favorite Brimson troll despite not having played the game? Um... I'm not really sure. I mean, I think probably Tagara is probably my favorite, but, uh, um, I, I suppose, like, if I had to pick, I'd probably just go ahead and, and go with him. Uh, the music seems a little loud. Okay, let me... Let me, let me knock that down a bit. There. How's that? Is that better? I mean, it should be. But I hope so. I'm here to make you comfortable. You try to remain stoic while your confrontational new friend decides what to do with you. Unfortunately, you sniff at him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I guess if it starts, uh, if it starts drowning me out, uh, just let me know and I'll adjust it as much on the fly as I can. Oh my, oh dear, you're sad? <laughs> so amusing to me. Mildly endearing even, perhaps. I'll decide later if it's endearing once I have more information. It's entirely possible I will retroactively decide it's disgusting. But for now, try to put yourself at ease, you completely pitiful fool. Not one more sniffle. Do you understand? You nod while practicing exemplary control over your nose. You have gotten yourself so agitated. I wonder why you have nothing to worry about from me. Of course I will be your friend, conditionally, I mean. It, there is a chance the designation... Whoa. Uh, so, I suppose you can just scroll through the chat if you have a wheel. That's pretty neat. Let's call it a friendship in progress, agreed? Your heart swells. This is what you've been waiting for. A new friend. Oh, gosh. All you have to do now is try not to fuck anything up at all, possibly for many hours. Come into my hive this way after me. You look like you could use nourishment. I don't know what it is that whatever you are eats generally, but it doesn't matter. You will eat whatever it is I have on hand if I tell you to. How does that sound? If you hit H, you can get rid of the text. Whoa! What is this, friend sim hard mode? Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> it sounds good. I'll do whatever you say. Obviously, it sounds good. You will definitely enjoy it. You will enjoy everything I provide you with and tell you to do. I can't imagine any sort of negativity or disagreement coming from one of my friends. Wow, she's kind of pushy. 
I will assume that we share this philosophy when it comes to friendship. You say, oh yes, absolutely. You nod as enthusiastically as you can without aggravating your broken ribs. You consider giving her a thumbs up as well until you realize one of your arms is probably broken too. You'll try to make sure she doesn't notice though. It would probably leave a bad impression. Come with me. There is something I need your help with. Ooh, she's got a messy kitchen. You follow her into her hive. It's a bit gloomy in her. You suppose she's going to pick you something to eat soon as promised. You pass through her kitchen and out the other side to another room. Okay, you guess dinner can wait. This way, try not to let any of your broken limbs slow you down. A good friend wouldn't allow such a trifling physical ailments cause me any inconvenience. Oh, so you guess she does know you're injured. Fair enough. You hobble a little faster through another door into a much darker room, and now down a flight of stairs? It's hard to see. There are torches along the wall ahead. A monstrous noise rumbles below. Don't mind her. She's just hungry. She's always hungry, though. What's that? You're hungry, too? I have not forgotten. What sort of piece of shit friend do you take me for? You didn't remind her that you're hungry. You thought it, though. Can she read your mind? You hope not. That's going to make this friendship in progress a bit awkward. Here we are. This is where you will be most useful to me as a friend. Oh. Hmm, okay. <laughs> you look around. With a sense of relief, you see no sign of whatever hungry thing is grumbling down here. You are less relieved to see several other kids trapped in cages of various shape and size. One of them makes eye contact with you. The boy is the same kind of alien as her, horns and all. He has a dark red symbol on his shirt. His expression seems to plead with you. He struggles to say, help. Your new friend looks unamused and twitches her finger. Help. Hello, he says. Help, Lo, by which I mean hello, of course. Looks like you're the new friend in progress chosen by the great and beautiful Ardata. She's my savior, my reason for being. I am nothing without her. I'd hollow myself out and let her make a nest inside of me if she'd permit it. You turn away from this boy. You don't ever want to hear anything he has to say ever again. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I don't know about that. But if you say so, I guess you're right. <laughs> don't mind him. He's always regarded himself as a comedian. Come over here. This is what I need your help with if you're going to have any value to me as a friend. You're led to a dank corner of this, well, you're going to call it like you see it. This dungeon. Your new friend has a dungeon full of sad, suffering children and presumably a monster lurking somewhere in here as well. It's not ideal. Then again, social beggars like you can't be choosers. I've been having an awful time with it. You can do it for me. It will save me some time. You look at the thing in question. You doubt she's been having an awful time with it. You doubt this because it's still in its box, looking completely untouched since it was brought down here. It's a box containing a table? A table that looks ominously like it was designed to keep a person strapped to its surface. Ooh, this is getting weird. I will need you to assemble it. Here's a screwdriver in case you need it. I will assume other required tools are contained within the box. You take the screwdriver with your non-broken arm. This isn't exactly what you had in mind. Hey, friends in Mystery Dungeon. <laughs> I'd play that. I would play that for sure. You don't know what you had in mind, really. A warm meal? Friendly banter? 
perhaps a sling for your arm and a remedial balm for your ribs. Still, you open the box without protest. Hold on, before you start, this will make for excellent content. My fans will appreciate this. She sets up a video recording device on a tripod and points it at you. A video feed comes to life on several monitors just behind you. You see in one corner of the screen an unflattering angle of your torso hunched over the furniture box. The other rectangles contain shots of the other kids in cages around the room. You suppose cameras are pointing at them, too. You had no idea this friendship came with the perk of instant stardom. Now you may begin. She's suddenly sitting in a comfortable-looking chair facing you and holding a chalice, swishing around some viscous liquid it contains. You have all the parts spread out on the floor, organized according to her labels and the instructions. You try to remember the last time you assembled something like this. You don't recall enjoying it. To be perfectly honest, this doesn't look like it will be fun at all. She frowns conspicuously. Oh, how sad for you. I'm sorry, is this activity not to your liking? You reassure her vigorously that no, it actually looks amazing. You love shit like this. It's what you were born for, you say, as you swoosh the screwdriver around, demonstrating your plainly evident skill with the tool. Yeah, that's a really good self-portrait. I like the picture of, uh, of her little grub self. With, I guess that's a tick. Ugh. Forget the thing you just thought. Completely arbitrary and wrong thoughts pop into your head all the time. It meant nothing, you swear. <laughs> yes, I hear that a lot. Continue. You open the little bag full of screws. Jesus, there are like 50 screws to this thing. Where could most of these screws possibly even go? Judging from the picture, the table really doesn't seem that complicated. You look at your screwdriver and then study the screws. Every single one requires an Allen wrench. Does this even come with an Allen wrench? The instruction seems to suggest it does. You look around but don't see one. Did you open the bag too forcefully? Did the Allen wrench go bouncing off into a dark dungeon crevice nearby? Maybe you lost some of the screws, too. Damn it. You begin to sweat and look around nervously. You check underneath one of the parts. No, it's not under there. You grip the screwdriver a little tighter. You wonder what to do next. Uh, I'll just do my best at assembling this table. That's what friends are for. You decide it would be best not to complain about the missing Allen wrench. Your friend would probably consider it bad form. You'll just make do as best you can and twist in all the screws by hand. Your broken arm isn't making this any easier. You favor the other one and prop pieces into place precariously leaning against each other while you nudge them into position with your legs so the screw holes align. It's really frustrating work, you're not going to lie. As you are twisting in the first screw, the grooves slip and the screw gets stuck, but you've already turned it too tight. Now it's hard to get it out. You twist in reverse harder, but your fingers slip and the table pieces start to slide. They're going to fall. You react to catch them, but it's too late. The heavier piece tips over and slams you in the broken ribs on its way to the floor. Wow, this we're, we're having quite a difficult time with this table. It hits the floor with a bang. The stuck screw pops out and goes bouncing 10 or 15 feet away, settling deep underneath a piece of dungeon furniture. Gosh, you're probably going to need to get that. You hear a light chuckle. Good. Good. She takes another sip from her chalice and settles even more comfortably into her chair. Is she enjoying this? Do you think she's enjoying watching you struggle to put this stupid thing together? Maybe a little too much. Nevertheless, you continue. A friend is a friend, and you don't like to let your friends down. You've committed yourself to this project. Damn right I have. You will get the screw out from under there a bit later. Maybe when you need the final screw. You turn your attention back to the table pieces and try a different strategy. You place the biggest part of the table platform flat on the floor. 
The legs would be pointing upward if they were attached. You position one leg in the right spot in alignment with the holes, sit on the table platform, and steady the leg with your feet. You grab another screw and concentrate. <laughs> she sounds so pleased. It's strange to admit her watching this sort of activity to make someone so happy. I've known people who are into weirder things, but you also have to admit to taking a certain pride in it. It's wonderful, actually, to feel useful, wanted, important even, if only somewhat menially, to a great new friend who has discovered a way for your talents to improve your life. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice one of the caged kids reaching out with his hand. He's concentrating. Then you notice the screw you lost slowly slide out from it from underneath its hiding place. Nice. Everyone's working like a team down here. Ardata does not look at the kid but sneers a bit. She reaches towards him and appears to have trouble breathing. After a moment, you notice the screw slowly slides back under the thing. She releases him from his breathing problems, resumes her pleasant expression, and takes another sip from the chalice. You guess that was against the rules? You decide to make note of it. Your friend runs a tight ship down here. You respect that. Man, this is, uh... This isn't gonna, like, turn into Saw or anything, is it? Yeah, this really is how furniture assembly is. One time I had to put a desk together and it took three hours. Uh, so if you're going to put a desk together, get someone to help you, alright? Learn from my mistakes. About an hour later, you have all four legs on, plus some other accoutrements attached. You wrestle mightily with the arm, with the thing to get it upright using only your good arm. It seems she may have forgotten about the final missing screw. You doubt the table needs it. You won't. De you decide you won't bring it up if she wants. You give it a test. It's pretty wobbly since you were only able to tighten the screws with your bare fingers. But again, she doesn't seem to mind. She reclines and has a look on her face which makes her appear absolutely enamored of your handiwork. She has finished her drink and the chalice is on a side table. Some awful looking thing crawls along the floor towards her. It looks like some sort of spider, the size of an average dog. Its abdomen is preposterously large. Actually, you think it's a huge tick? That's what it looks like. Oof, that's just... Ooh, that makes my skin crawl thinking about it. It settles just in front of her. She puts her legs on top of it and crosses them. It settles under her weight and grumbles. Let's try it out, shall we? You shrug and sit down on the rather rickety table. You're about to lie down, but she interrupts you. No. You fool. You absolute fool. What do you think you're doing? That's not what I meant. Get up. You stand up, embarrassed. Again, without looking at the caged kid, she raises an arm towards him and beckons. He stares blankly and opens his own cage which apparently wasn't locked. He shuffles vacantly over to your table and lies down on its surface. She looks at you expectantly. You aren't sure what to do. What? You didn't think I'd be playing table stickball on that thing, did you? You aren't sure what table stickball is. Oh, you, you really are pretty simple, aren't you? It's like a miniature version of arena stick ball, played on a table. Got it? You don't, but you nod. <laughs> That's pretty much what I'm doing right now. Anyway. Now go to it. <laughs> you shackle the kid's arms and legs to the table. That seems to be the right thing to do, since the thing comes fitted with shackles. She gets up and lifts her huge tick light pick and makes more grumpy noises. She plops the enormous thing right down on the kid's chest. He appears rendered unable to protest. I don't like the way this is going. <laughs> this is gonna get weird. The tick bites the boy's neck and begins to feed. She smiles and pats its swelling abdomen. Dark, rust-colored blood dribbles from the place where it is attached to the boy's neck. 
Moments go by while she looks gratified by the process. Proud, almost. And then she looks at you expectantly. Well, you don't know what she means. The final screw. Aren't you going to retrieve it and screw it into wherever it needs to go? The job isn't done. I don't keep the company of many individuals who leave things unfinished, you know. Of course, what were you thinking? You should have known your friend wouldn't let that go unnoticed. Actually, you feel like an idiot for thinking it would. You stoop very low to the ground on your knees, placing your cheek just above the floor. You peer under the large edifice. It's dark in there and goes back a ways. Lots of room for that darn little screw to roll. You take a few pitiful swipes with your good arm, but come up empty. It must be further back. You think you can see it? Yeah, that must be it. Just a little further. You have an idea. A tool would be helpful. Guess the screwdriver will come in handy after all. Hmm, how did she know? Your new friend must be very wise. You think you're liking her more every minute. You grab the screwdriver and feel around with it. You... Yes, you got it, you think. You carefully scrape it closer to yourself and then pick it up. You then go back to the table and find the one remaining hole you left unscrewed. You slide under the table as a mechanic would with a car. There it is. The table is creaking and wobbling quite a bit now. The tick is really getting into its dinner, it seems. All of the loose screws in the table have added up to a lot of give and leeway in the overall stability of the furnishing. Maybe the final screw will help. Our data has returned to the setup with the monitors. She's adjusting some of the settings on the feed, controlling the zoom of the camera, and the typing some remarks into a chat window. <laughs> this is very good material today. It's not often that I can provide content of this caliber to my subscribers. Go on, complete your project. This will be very good. You still think it's weird that she likes watching you put furniture together so much. But you're not one to judge friends. Sounds like a great way to lose friends, honestly. You screw in the final screw, but the stress on the table are causing the holes to be misaligned. This won't be easy. The huge tick shift its grotesque body above you, causing the table to creak loudly. You nervously slide halfway out from under the table to check it out. Then a loud pop. The sound of scraping metal. Six or seven screws shoot out of the desk like rivets in a sinking submarine. What a piece of shit this thing is, you think a little too late. You really needed that Allen wrench. All four legs splay dramatically out from underneath it at once, like a baby deer on ice. The table platform comes crushing down on your lower torso, breaking your pelvis. You bellow in pain and flail to pull yourself out. Oh. You forget that you're still holding the screwdriver, and you're desperate flailing. You plunge the screwdriver into the fat abdomen of the tick, which begins gushing rust blood with great force, spraying your entire upper body and face. Oh, this is getting... Yikes. Yikes, indeed. The beast starts thrashing wildly and screaming. You can't see your new friend due to the blood in her eyes, but you can't imagine she's thrilled about what's going on here. Your annihilated pelvis is in perfect agony. You have to get your miserable torso off from under this shitty table. You have an idea. With your broken arm, you start slapping the big ass of the screaming tick while yelling, Yee-haw! You clutch the screwdriver handle with your other hand hard. The, the blood-gushing monster starts kicking and rearing and then blasts off across the dungeon floor like a pig at a rodeo. You hold on for dear life, still blind, but your plan works. You've been pulled out from under the tomb you've spent the last hour constructing for yourself. Your pelvis is in ruins, but at least you're free now and riding like the wind. As you and the blood spewing tick go tearing around the room, crashing into stuff, you hear a boy crying. You guess Ardata became distracted enough by your foolish display to seize her per her 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 dude's been tied down on him, or maybe she's distracted by the wrong word. Maybe she's disappointed by your foolishness? Oh god, you might be blowing it right now. The tick swerves suddenly and starts running up the stairs. Ow, 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 your brittle pelvis feels every step on the way up. 
It careens through the rest of the hive, crashes through the front door, and then comes to a sudden halt. You're catapulted violently over its backside and sail 50 yards through the air. You land on your ass and wipe the blood from your eyes. Okay, this was embarrassing. But everyone makes mistakes, right? You can still salvage this friendship. You know you can. You turn back to look at her hive. Our data is standing in her doorway with a furious look on her face. She's flipping you off. <laughs> you will not be my friend. Oh, oh no. We weren't able to make a friend. Okay, well, that kind of sucks. Hmm. Okay, well, hmm. Let's see if we can uh, make friends with Hot Dog Boy. I, I hope this goes a lot better, and I hope that uh, there aren't any giant ticks involved. We, we used to have kind of a tick problem in the backyard, and every so often a dog would come inside and have like two or three ticks on him, and then we just have to spend some time picking them off, and it was just ugh. So... So now every single time I think about ticks, it kind of like sends a little shiver up my spine. I don't... Ooh. You can get back to the choice to stray away by going on load and pressing the Q. Oh, okay. Uh, well, in that case, uh, yeah, let's see if we can get all the endings for our data before we... Uh, before we move on. Uh... Oh, I didn't make a save. Maybe one of these? Hitting control also fast forwards. Oh, okay. Well, let's try that then. Control, control. I mean, as long as we're here and we can... Okay. Okay, alright. Uh, well, let's see. Last time we chose it sounds good. This time we'll choose it sounds fine. Get the fuck out of my face and never come back. Oh. Uh <laughs> okay, well, uh, that's another ending, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Huh. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, hmm, let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> That was pretty good. Okay. Now we gotta put that table together again. Uh, last time we just assembled the table, so this time let's just get the hell out of here. First, you clear your head and try to think innocent thoughts. Fluffy clouds in the sky, ironing some clothes. A winning touchdown pass from the sports. Ardata's long black hair spilling over her cloak. Or, wait, these are not innocent thoughts. Shut it down. Shut it down. There's no time for thinking. You have to act. You hurl the screwdriver at her and run. She calmly lifts a hand towards one of the kids in the cages. The kid tenses up and lifts a hand in the direction of the screwdriver. The screwdriver freezes midair right in front of our data's head. I like to imagine that it's like the drink and not like the tool. You run up the stairs. She twitches a finger. The caged kid does a full body spasm and the screwdriver goes sailing towards you. It stabs deep into your leg and you buckle over, tumbling backwards down the stairs. You're a crumpled heap at the bottom of the stairs, bleeding, and you think your arm is broken in two places now. That didn't seem very friendly to me. Luckily for you, I'm very determined to make relationships work. 
even ones with people from Flea's Simple Furniture Assembly Projects. She stands over you. You attempt to pull the screwdriver up out of your leg, but your entire body locks up. You can't move. She holds an outstretched hand just above you. You shouldn't try to move yet. And you certainly shouldn't try to pull out that screwdriver. You'll get blood everywhere. To my three little eyes, under the present conditions, it seems to me that only one of us should attempt walking up these stairs. You feel relieved. Perhaps she has some alien means of levitating you up the stairs? Wait, no. Your body is tensing up again. It's moving without your permission. You get to your feet without taking the screwdriver out. Wow, that hurts. What is she making you... Wait, what? She can't be. Ooh, ah! You use both of your arms and all of your strength and pick her up entirely. The pain from your arm is excruciating. Arms with broken bones are not meant for heavy lifting. The additional weight on your wounded leg isn't great either. You hold her as a groom would hold a bride. She wraps her arms around your neck to hang on to you in what strikes you as an overly familiar manner. She looks directly into your eyes and grins. This is better. Now onward and upward, new friend. <laughs> your legs begin to operate without your consent. They wobble and struggle under the weight of those wound throbs. You lumber back up the long flight of stairs, carrying her all the way. You take her back to the kitchen and set her down in a chair seated at a table. You didn't think I'd forget about dinner time, did you? Let's put your unfriendly behavior behind us. It's a good thing for you that I'm benevolent enough to overlook disgusting acts of betrayal. You may have noticed I keep several friends in my hive who I've similarly forgiven. Consider the transgression blood beneath the abattoir. You exhale. Now that she mentions that yes, you are hungry. Maybe a warm meal will lift your spirits and get this heretofore turbulent friendship back on track. Maybe you'll even get the chance to pull this screwdriver out of your leg. You pull out a chair and attempt to sit down, but your legs lock up and you stand again. Apparently this was not the right thing to do. Oh, but why are you sitting? There's cooking to be done. Oof. You stagger mechanically over to the fridge and open it. You pull out a large hock of some sort of alien mystery meat and put it on the counter. With your broken arm, you reach in anguish for a big, dangling meat cleaver. You chop the hawk, wincing with each swing of the cleaver. You place the sliced meat in a frying pan, sear it lightly, and serve it on a plate very rare, just the way your new friend likes it. You didn't know that this is the way she likes it, but you surmise this is what she prefers in a piece of meat, since technically she is the one doing the cooking. You put it on the table in front of her, along with a fork and a knife beside it. Your muscles relax as you apparently are allowed to control your own body again. She does nothing except for look at you with a pleased expression. You eye the meat in front of her, and then the meat on the counter, and the chair on the other side of the table. What should you do? Prepare a plate for yourself? Is that what she wants you to do? Well, it looks like you're confused. Isn't it obvious what to do next under your own volition? A good friend would know what to do. In fact, I don't think a good friend would take nearly as long to decide what the right thing to do next is. It actually seems to me that you're a very rude friend who would hesitate for as long as you were hesitating. Or perhaps someone who is not a friend at all. You begin to sweat again. You clearly don't have much time to make up your mind. If you wait for even a few seconds longer, you will probably be guilty of being a bad friend. Maybe even a dreadful one. Oh, we don't want that. That's not the type of person you like to think you are. What will you do? Well, there's not a whole lot of choices here, I guess. I guess we'll feed her. This feels like the only obvious thing to do. She is looking up at you quite expectantly. You reach for the fork with your good arm. You go for the knife with your other. Ow! Oh, I'm excited for the clowns, too. I'm gonna have to buy, like, a big horn, a big bicycle horn, just honk it into the 
into the microphone for most of those routes. Won't that be fun? You can't do it. The arm is much less serviceable when the muscles are not being forced via psychic override to disregard the pain response. Nevertheless, she looks at you patiently and smiles. That's nice of her, you think. Not to be mad about it. You feel like you're growing closer to your new friend by the minute. You put the fork down and pick up the knife with your good arm. You cut the meat into several pieces with a careful sawing motion. You put the knife down, pick up the fork, and stab the piece. You put it close to her mouth. She seems pleased. Very good. Nice technique. Well-sized morsels, too. She chews the meat with excellent form. She has very good table manners, you think. When she finishes the pieces, you slice off some more and continue. The meat looks very good. Her mouth is watering, but she doesn't offer any. Oh well, and it's the right time for you to eat too, and you're sure she'll let you know. The meal is finished. There is no more meat except for a few pieces of unchewable bristle, which you did not try to feed her. That would be thoughtless and very bad service. She reclines and steeples her fingers, looking quite pleased with how the evening has gone so far. <laughs> you aren't sure why she's laughing. Did you do something funny? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> what a fool! You point at yourself, wondering if she's referring to you. You don't know what you've done that was foolish. If so, you're also still not sure what she finds so amusing. <laughs> she pauses her laughter for a minute or two and slowly begins to frown. A faint blue tear rolls down her cheek from her bottom eye. The truth is, I don't even know why I'm laughing. This isn't very funny, what's happening here. It was a good dinner. You did a good job, whoever you are. She puts her face in both of her hands and sobs quietly. You still have no idea what to do about this. You stand there, still holding the fork, feeling a bit useless. There is a lot of pressure, you know. Being so respected and admired for your high status in this world, I didn't ask for this, to be so superior to so many. Much is expected of you. Much is presumed about what your personality will be before you even develop one. You work hard and build a brand based only on what you think people assume you should be like. Sometimes I wonder, am I even that good at being sinister? Could I be more sinister if I tried harder? Maybe this is not my true calling after all. You begin to offer words of sympathy. This, is, this all seems heartbreaking to you, your poor new friend, but your jaw muscles contract and your mouth shuts involuntarily. You guess it's not your turn to speak yet? Okay, that works for you. You like to be a good listener to your friends. But what would happen if I changed my brand? If I stopped being so sinister online? Wow, big mood, Ardetta. My friends and followers will deride and reject me, and my superiors will eat me alive. If I show weakness, if I scale back on my bloodthirsty content, will I incur the scorn of a wise-ass clown with a hundred million subscribers? Will I be in a cage someday, listening to a fucking fool honk his horn for likes? No, I must persist. How lonely it is to know this is all I can do until the day I leave this planet. I have no material or sensory comforts left for me here. Until I can get on a ship and fly away, pain is my only solace. Your hand holding the fort grips it tighter. You're horrified to realize what is in the process of doing. You bring it down hard on her hand, which is placed flat on the table. She doesn't flinch or react from it in any way. Three trails of cerulean blood flow from the tines where they pierce her skin. That wasn't friendly, you think. But then, you weren't the one who did it, were you? You're so confused. My subscribers are not real friends. They adore me for my sinister content. The show I provide, my wicked, infectious laughter. 
get jealous of them sometimes because they get to watch my content. It must be thrilling, I think. But maybe. I'm just jealous of them because they get to be the people who aren't me. This is fucking deep, I know. Apologies if you cannot relate. She pulls the fork out of her hand and lays it gently on the plate of gristle you didn't feed her. The people downstairs in their cages aren't my friends either. They act like they're my friends though, and sometimes I even believe it. But they don't really want to be friends with me. Nobody does. The only person who's ever really wanted to be my friend, who's ever tried to be, is you. You clear your throat and point to yourself in the sun. That's it. I've decided. You have passed the test. You will become my friend. Officially. As such, I think a reward is in order. You are overjoyed. Your heart starts racing. You can't believe it. A real new friend. But you don't have much time to enjoy this achievement. Your body is doing something again. You bend down in a strained emotion and pick up the plate and fork. You position the plate over your wide open mouth and scrape in all the remaining gristle and begin chewing. Oh. Oh, it's virtually inedible. Your mouth humors the act of chewing for two seconds, and then you swallow it all. All of it whole in one painful gulp. It tastes like friendship. Hooray! We made a friend, everybody. We've made a new friend. I'm so happy. Yay! You found out that being a cerulean blood is hard and nobody understands. Boy, that's the truth. Alright, I think that's all the endings for, for the first one. Oh, you think I should adjust the music? Is it, uh, is it too loud or is it too quiet? Oh, okay. Uh, all right, yeah, I will. Let me n n knock that volume down a bit. That That should probably do it. We need to hear your dulcet tones better. Ah, good gravy. If you turn the volume on the mic up a little bit, uh, that might help. I think the mic is like maxed out as far as volume control goes. Yeah. I think that's about as loud as I can get it, but that sh That should be fine since I took the music down so much. You can adjust the music volume. Yeah, I did. I turned it down a bit earlier because, because uh, on the last stream, some people were having a hard time hearing everything. Uh, but I'll knock it down a little bit more. Like I want to make sure that there is some kind of sound going on in case something happened tonight have to stop talking for like more than five seconds. I made myself, oh geez. Hmm. Okay, let, let me try, let me try turning this volume all the way up and then the The music can sound in here way down. Is that better? Okay. Nice. Nice. We figured it out, everyone. We did it. 
Okay, now we can get on with the uh, with date demon da diamonds date demon date demons de hot dog boys are out. Oh, I'm gonna have to say his name a whole lot, aren't I? Oh. Well, I don't know if I'm a master audio mixer just yet, but uh, <laughs> yeah, nothing friendlier than audio tech issues. All right, here we go. Yes, someone is approaching. A strange, gray-skinned alien with a cozy-looking vest. Perhaps they will make for a good friend? What's up? Oof. Hang on, sorry. I didn't get a good look at you before I started talking. I guess you're really weird-looking. Kind of uncomfortable about this. Your stammering reply eventually conveys that you're a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in some need of medical treatment. You're also really lonely and wouldn't mind making a new friend right about now. Hungry, huh? I see what your game is. You aren't sure what he's talking about. Then your eyes drift toward the obvious target, that exquisite hot dog he's holding. It looks really, really good. Your mouth starts watering noticeably. Oh, now there's no music? Maybe there's just... not music in this part? Or maybe the music volume is independent of sound volume? Why would there be two different controls, though? Okay, how's that? Turn up the music just a notch. Okay, how's that? Like, under C? Under... Okay, yeah. Perfect, perfect, okay, perfect, yeah, we did it. I think there needs to be, like, a, uh... Better sound test for stream stuff. Maybe there is, and I just don't know where it is yet, but, uh... Uh... Yeah, we'll mess around with it some more, I guess. But, uh, yeah, this should be a whole lot better now. Uh, hopefully it will save all of this going forward, but, uh, okay. Let's, uh, yeah, let's make a save. And then get back to it. I knew it. You're just like all the rest. Your agenda is to have me re relinquish my delicacy. Well, forget it. I've been tricked out of two other oblong meat products this week already. And I know you probably think I'm an easy mark due to my blood color, but I still have some dignity at least. You don't know anything about his blood color, or why would that matter in this conversation about his hot dog? You're hungry, sure, but you didn't mean to cast a threatening gaze at his meal. All you really want to do is make a new buddy, so you really don't feel quite so alone in this strange new world. I see. You just want a friend and not my sweet meat? Sorry, I get a little paranoid when I walk around with such delicacies in public. You can't be too careful. Folks tend to get greedy with look in their eyes around my warm sausage. These are odd ways to express the things he's saying, you think. But it would be rude to point that out. Probably best to change the subject. Get this blossoming friendship moving in the right direction. Ask if he lives nearby. Ask if you can have a bite of his hot dog. It looks amazing. Well... <laughs> uh, I think he's obviously very protective of his hot dog, so... Uh, we'll just ask if he lives nearby. Yeah, or I used to, I mean. My place was bombed by drones a while ago. Now I don't have a hive, but I'm making it work out here foraging for tasty things when I can. I've gotten pretty good at it. Talking people into giving me meat products, I mean. 
You quickly feel he has a sense of pity for your new friend. You thought you had it rough, crash landing here, hungry and friendless, and come to think of it, it feels like your arm is broken? Your ribs too, maybe, but enough self-pity. This is about making a new great friend. You ask your friend if there's anything you can do to improve his life. Oh wait, are we friends now? Like, is that official? Man, I don't know. Why don't we slow it down a bit, see how things go? I'm not saying it's out of the question. I just think I should take some time to see if you're actually friendship material. Someone I trust, you know? Not just another looky-loo gunning for my delicacy. Oh damn, you got out of your skin you got out over your skis again. Of course he's right, this is totally reasonable. You feel you can do what it takes to win him over. You make a mental note to avoid looking at or mentioning his hot dog, since it seems to be such a sensitive subject. You do everything in your power to avert your gaze from the hot dog. You are aggressively not looking at it, in fact. Don't think hot dog thoughts. Don't think hot dog thoughts. It's working. You aren't even thinking about hot dogs at all. It's like he isn't even holding one, and no one ever even brought up the fact that hot dogs exist. He seems to notice, on some primal level, your current non-hot dog mindset. He smiles. Aw, what a precious angel. You pay closer attention to the boy's face. It's a nice smile he has, actually. Very kind, disarming. A few freckles here and there, a mop of messy hair draping over his eyes. What a nice friend this would be to have, you think. He's kind of adorable, really, if you disregard the prickly attitude about his hot dog. Okay, wait a minute. You don't want to start thinking thoughts that are too friendly. You should dial this down a little. Stick to the basics. You just want a cool new friend, nothing more. You should try to spark up some non-meat-related conversations soon before things get awkward. You wonder about his house. It got bombed? Yeah, you know. Routine drone passed through my hood. A little bombing, a little culling. That's how it goes around here. I was a lucky one. My Lucis, not so much. He's a goner. You don't know what a Lucis is, but you can deduce it was someone important to him who probably died in the bombing. Rather than overwhelm him with annoying questions about his culture, you decide to play. The right play is to show some sympathy. Thanks. I miss him. Sometimes I think I enjoy savory bun delights as a way of covering up the pain. They're so good, though, it's hard to stop. I also favored the juicy meats before he died anyway. It's something we did together. <laughs> How did we start talking about my hot dog once more? Let's drop it, please. Dude, don't bring it up again. You didn't bring it up, but you don't want to correct him. The boy is clearly grieving. You see two faint red tears roll, roll down his cheeks from behind the messy bangs. Your heart can't take it. You'll have to console this homeless boy somehow. Then he'll definitely be your friend. But what to do? Hmm. How about we give him a reassuring hug? Everyone likes reassuring hugs. You open your arms and approach him with a posture of great compassion. You throw your brow upwardly a bit as if to say, I know, I know how hard it is. You advance and he leans backwards a little as if caught off guard by your sympathy. Maybe you're coming on too strong, but you know there's no turning back now. You don't just throw the brakes on an imminent heartfelt hug like this. You embrace him awkwardly and it goes well for a moment until you realize your arm is broken and it seizes up reflexively in pain. It jostles the hot dog in his hand and he bobbles it. You both gasp. You try to detach from the hug so you can catch the dog, but it's already on its way to the ground. In your attempt to save it, you stagger backwards and slip. The hot dog gets smushed under your big dumb ass the moment it makes the contact with the ground. Diamond lets out a shriek. No! Oh, dude! Dude, my dog! You scramble to get up in time, hoping you're not as owned as it looks. But your feet keep slipping and your butt keeps grinding the hot dog into the mud. When the carnage finally subsides, you roll over and check it out. It's completely unsalvageable. Just a gross, meaty mud mash. Like the hot dog never even existed. 
Diamond howls in agony and slumps backwards against a tree. Oh no. We fucked this up so bad, guys. That's it, man. I've lost everything. I'm not sure what the point is of even living anymore. You're absolutely mortified by your clumsiness and foolishness. You have a feeling you'll be thinking about this moment for years to come during those insecure moments when your mind seems to be looking for any excuse to make yourself cringe with self-doubt and shame. Still, you can't help but feel this guy is being a little unreasonable. It's just one hot dog. There are probably plenty more of those to come by for those who know where to look in this strange world. He himself said he makes a habit of enjoying these, so they can't be all that uncommon. Maybe he just has an unusual psychological disorder surrounding a fixation on this particular food item? Yes, that could be it. Poor guy. This just means he needs your support as a friend all the more. You won't give up on your friends. Or for that matter, people who you're just trying desperately to become friends with. That just isn't who you are as a person. You have an idea. You run it by him with a sense of optimism and salesmanship. The past is behind you. There is no need to wallow in self-incrimination and guilt over the hot dog incident. Diamond perks up a little. You... You want to help me get another hot dog? Absolutely. It could be a fun adventure, you say. Something to bond over to bring two new buddies closer together. Okay, you don't say that out loud, but you really hope it's true. I don't know. Could be a long shot. Sometimes it can be days before I am united with another plump treat. Listening with perspiration. Steaming, relaxing comfortably in a soft, melt-in-your-mouth loaf. Damn. No, I really want a hot dog. I guess I don't have much choice but to take you up on your offer, do I? What do you have in mind? It's a good question. You haven't made a plan yet, and frankly, you don't even know where to begin. But he's interested in spending more time with you, which is the most important thing. You'll figure something out. Huh, just think all of this started by squishing a hot dog with my humongous ass. You decide a display of confidence is called for here. A real show of leadership to improve morale. You smile, hold your head up high, and tell him to follow you. You know exactly what to do. Well, not really, but you give no indication of that at all. He's definitely intrigued. You've got him hooked now, you think. He's probably wondering if he hit pay dirt. Finding a new friend with THE hot dog hookup. Of course, you don't have the slightest idea where to find a hot dog. But you've got to admit you're enjoying the feeling of being important and valued by a potential friend. You don't want to do anything underhanded. Yet you can't help feel you should probably milk this social gambit for all it's worth. This way, you say, as you begin marching confidently in a random direction. He obediently follows and begins rubbing his tummy. You begin to feel nervous almost immediately. You have absolutely no idea how this is going to play out, or if it stands any chance of resulting in a hot dog at the end of your journey. Oh well, you'll figure something out along the way. Man, that's my life story right there. You lead him through the streets and winding through the yards of strange looking houses and he follows. He takes care to make sure you both are not seen, which could get you both in trouble, apparently. The impoverished, circuitous route appears to provoke his suspicion. Dude, are you sure you know where a dog is? It seems like maybe you're lost. Oh, absolutely. You're absolutely sure you know where to find one, you say. You're just throwing anyone off the trail who might have been following you. He nods solemnly as if that makes perfect sense. Whew. But you can't keep him guessing like this forever. You've got to do something. Take some bold action to keep his interest in this wiener quest. <laughs> That's for sure. You say, this way, down here. This is a shortcut to the hot dog supply you're privy to. It's the mother road. Um, in the sewer? Yeah, totally. It should be just a short trek through the sewer. Shouldn't take more than another hour or several of sewer trudging. That is, if he still has the will to do what it takes to get his hands on some more juicy dogs. Oh, hell yeah. You know it. After you, man. Ooh, gross. An hour later, you're so deep in the sewer, you've lost all bearings and sense of direction. 
You could be anywhere by now. You've taken so many crazy turns. Still, you don't let up for a second that you're lost. You've made each turn with decisive conviction. He's still following you, but now he's having trouble keeping up. He's out of breath and struggling with the foul smell. Can't say you're enjoying it much either, but you can't let on to the fact that what you're doing now is anything other than the most casual routine for you. Like, you do this every day. Just a quick jaunt through the sewer to hit up this vast mythical trove of meat products. Okay, well when you put it that way, maybe this all sounds a bit insane? Still, you're in too deep to second guess yourself now. Hey, I gotta... I gotta stop and rest. I can't lie, I'm starving for a heavenly frankfurter. But this might be too much for me. I don't think I'm cut out for this. You pause and look back. He's sitting down now, slumping against a filthy sewer wall. You're intensely relieved to see you have made just won this impromptu game of sewer hot dog chicken. But more importantly than that, this looks like an ideal time to show some sympathy and have a bonding moment with your would-be friend. You sit next to him and with your broken arm, put a hand on his knee in a platonic but deeply understanding way. Your arm hurts when you do this, but it's worth it. Every little gesture counts when making a new friend. I just... I kinda suck. My Lucis is gone, I don't have any skills, and most people think I'm weird for liking hot dogs so much. I'm probably just going to get culled. I'm not good at going on adventures or doing anything hard. All I'm good at is finding an easy meal here and there, however I could get it. I like talking to people out of their fine sausages, using tricks or other ploys which end up losing me friends. It's been unthinkable that anyone would actually want to do anything nice for me, or would want me to have that sweet, sweet meat I desire. At least it was unthinkable until now. Your heart begins to race. Could it be? Is, is this shitty improvised sewer escapade actually working? You can't believe it. Nobody's ever done so much or worked so hard to try to get my hands on another magnificent banger. Sorry for being emotional, but like, this is new for me. I, I don't know how to handle it. I'm, I'm just so, so grateful. I'd be thrilled to call you a friend, man. Whatever you are. You're overjoyed. Unbelievable. It's almost too good to be true. What now? It's such a sudden turn of good fortune. You hardly know what to do. Should... Should you hug the guy? Last time that didn't go so well, but this time he's not holding a hot dog for you to clumsily defile, so maybe this is your moment. Wait. What's that? A deep rumbling sound begins to echo through the tunnels. Oh shit. They found us. It's a drone, dude. I guess on, like, sewer duty? We gotta run! He gets up, grabs your hand, and sprints. He's a lot faster than he looks when motivated to get moving. He turns this way and that as the rumbling gets closer. But he slips on something and you both tumble into a river of horrific sludge. Ooh. Bro! I can't swim! Help! Your bad arm finds purchase on the ledge, and though it is very painful, you heroically salvage your friend from the muck with the other arm. He coughs and gasps for breath. You find a nearby ladder, shove him upward until he starts climbing on his own, and follow him. You, pop, you burst through a lid on the floor, and you both flop out of the hole drenched in filth, smelling horrible and completely exhausted. But at least you're safe, you think. Hey man, I just want you to know, even though we didn't find the glorious treasure you were leading us to, I'm happy how it all turned out. Maybe I don't need hot dogs in my life as much as I thought. Maybe that's not the real treasure after all. It's been a journey for me, let me tell you. I'm learning so much about myself, about life, because of you. His bushy hair is slicked back from his eyes due to the sludge. He's giving you a penetrating soulful gaze of presumably pure friendship. Or is it even deeper than that? Wow, this is intense. Uh, then something catches your eye just above him. Something dangling. Lots of dangling things, actually. Come to think of it, it's really cold in here. Freezing, in fact. 
you finally realize, holy shit, you're in a weird alien meat locker. You're absolutely surrounded by dangling meat products, including many sausages, thousands of them. You begin to sob. Your sobbing soon turns to unrestrained wailing of raw catharsis. He joins you and the tears flow freely from you both. You embrace each other and you let it all out. Suddenly it hits you, both of you. This is by far the happiest day of your life. Ah, we did it everyone. We found meat heaven and made friends. It's wonderful. Oh, we actually made, we actually got the good ending on the first try. This has never happened before. And you were all here to see it. Oh man, that's great. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, we did it, everyone. Okay, let's see if we can... Let's see if we can get the bad ending? Is there a bad ending? There can't be a bad ending. Right? I don't want to see a bad ending now. Uh, ask if you can have a bite of his hot dog. Forget it. I'm leaving forever. Bye. Okay, well, I guess that's the bad ending then. <laughs> At least it didn't take long to get to it. <laughs> oh, there's two bad endings. This is going to... Okay. Uh, well. Oh, yeah, because of the hug. Okay, yeah, let's try and get the other bad ending now. Let's see, volume one. Uh, friendly pat on the back. You keep it simple and pat him on the back a couple of times. Everything's going to be okay. Since you're his new friend, or at least working toward earning that status, he has a new ally to help him with whatever comes his way. He wipes his tears and appears to get himself back together. Your friendly gesture worked. You're right. I shouldn't let the past get me down. In a way, I'm free. I'm off the grid. They probably think I died. No need to worry about knocks on my door because I don't have a door anymore. Maybe I can live off the land for the rest of my life. Scrounging for sumptuous indulgences wherever I may find them. By rummaging through awful drums or smooth talking the right mark. Sounds like the life, honestly. I'll miss my loses, but I think he would be proud of me. If I can make it without him, if I can survive on my own, I know he would be proud. Maybe I don't even need to leave the planet. Maybe I can avoid taking the ordeals altogether can't test what you can't find. If I play my cards right, I can probably live to a ripe old age on this planet without getting caught. Like hiding in alleys and sewers, scraping together just enough succulent proteins to keep myself going. Honestly, I don't even need to get by that long, since I have a much shorter lifespan than most trolls. So I think I might just be able to make this work. You look confused at the last remark, but again, don't want to be impolite. He holds up his hand as if to tell you not to bother. I can tell you're not from here. It's okay. Rust bloods don't live a long time. Blood classes higher than me live progressively longer the higher you go up. Sea dwellers live basically forever. It's kind of crazy and seems unfair, but that's how it is. I'd be jealous of them, but I think I'm not. I'm almost grateful I don't have very long to make it in this world. I don't know what I'd do if I'd had longer. I'm happy to settle into a nice short ride, keep a low profile, take in some good meat along the way. Nothing wrong with that life, if you ask me. Do you understand? It seems like a tragic story, but if your friend has made peace with his destiny, you might as well too. You offer a sympathetic shrug and continue your impressive streak of consecutive seconds not looking at his hot dog at all. He smiles again. He seems to be relaxing, gripping the dog a little less tightly. That's good. You know, you're good at listening. 
not many people understand me at all. A lot of people find my overly possessive attitude towards Speedy Delights to be strange and off-putting. I've heard this more than once and lost some friends that way. Phew. There are some past personal dramas I do not want to think about, let me tell you. But you're different. Maybe you put me at ease because it's obvious you're even lower than me? No offense, but you are. Drones would vaporize a hornless goof like you, no questions asked. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. You laugh it off. You're not scared, you say. You've survived worse. You pat your broken ribs and wince. You clutch your sore rib with your broken arm and wince even harder because of that. Oh, man. Looks like that arm's hurt, huh? I guess it's broken. Let's see what we can do about that. Here, hold this a second. He hands you his hot dog without hesitation. Oh, wow, he... Wants you to hold it? This is such a remarkable gesture of trust. You're overwhelmed. You gingerly take the hot dog with your good arm, being very careful. You hold the hot dog from beneath with your fingertips, as if it's a priceless, delicate treasure. He takes off his vest and puts it on the ground. When he takes off his shirt, you avert your eyes for a moment and realize that's silly. Nothing's particularly indecent about this, you suppose. If he's comfortable, so are you. Then he puts his vest back on, takes the hot dog back from you, and hands you the shirt. Here, make a sling out of it. That should help. He's right, it does help. Your broken arm is a lot more comfortable and secure. This shirt smells like meat, too. You can't tell if you think that's a bonus or if that's weird. Oh, that is definitely a bonus, for sure. You decide it's a bonus. This is your new friend. He loves meat, and so do you. It's your greatest common interest, in fact. Nice. You know, I think we make a pretty good team. I don't know if I'm ready to officially call you my friend yet, but I may be getting close. You're pushing all the right buttons, man, just being someone who listens and understands. You have no idea how much that means to me. You're so happy to hear this, it makes your heart sing. Well, if you're keeping it totally real, some of these things he's saying are just a little strange. Like maybe this boy wasn't really socialized properly? By his Lucis, you guess? You think that might be his dad, but again, you don't dare ask. Not when the positive feelings are flowing like this. Why kill the mood? He gets a little bit closer and swoops a hand through his thick black bangs. For the briefest moment, you catch a glimpse of one of his eyes regarding you fondly. Your heart beats a little faster. He puts a hand on your shoulder. You're, you're starting to wonder if all he's interested in is friendship? You hope that's all he wants. You don't think you're ready for anything more than that. You're desperate for friendship, or really companionship of any sort, but that's moving pretty fast for you. But you're too nervous to make your feelings clear on all this. If he goes any further, you're not sure if you'll have the will to protest? Listen, dude. This gorgeous meat product we both admire? I'm thinking... Maybe we can share it. I think that sounds good, actually. Oh my, yes, that does sound wonderful. You're so hungry, and you're beside yourself with gratitude that Diamond is willing to share with you something so precious to him. It really means a lot. Here, I have an idea. He brings his face close to yours. He holds the hot dog up between your faces with both ends of the dog pointing to his mouth and yours. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you're not sure what he wants to do, you can't find the breath to ask. It seems like he wants you to eat the hot dog with him lady in drink style. <laughs> oh, this, this small precious child, this wonderful little boy. <laughs> yes, if pressed on and you'd agree the act is uncomfortably erotic. <laughs> But you have to admit, it is a good way to share a food item, whilst ensuring it gets split about evenly. And you absolutely loathe the idea of letting your friend down. It's completely at odds with your values as a person. You chomp down on your end of the hot dog as he does so with his end simultaneously. Holy shit, that is so good. You t take another bite, and he times his bite perfectly. He's eerily good at this game. <laughs>
<laughs> it's throwing off your chewing a bit, which makes you cough a little when you swallow. <laughs> but you don't feel like you can pause without breaking the eating rhythm with him. Might be what a bad friend would do. You keep going without really quite swallowing as you go. You get closer to his face, which is creating an imminent situation you aren't sure how you're going to handle. You haven't planned for it, and it's coming up fast. The hot dog backlog collecting in your throat is getting a bit too heavy, so you try to swallow, but you can't. You gag and cough up all the chewed hot dog matter explosively into his face. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. He recoils absolutely stunned. His bangs are blown back and he's staring at you with wide eyes. Hot dog and bun bits are all over his face. He says nothing for a moment then puts his hand on his throat. Oh fuck, he's choking. <laughs> he points at his mouth desperately. You need to do something. The Heimlich, of course, that's what you need to do. You need to save your friend's life. You get behind him and put your good arm around his belly and form a fist. You plunge the fist in under his ribs, trying to dislodge his masticated delicacy. It's no use. You can't get any leverage. You need your other arm. It really hurts, though. You'll have to make the sacrifice for your friend. Yes, a friend who may have just tried to trick you into kissing him with a silly hot dog stunt. You're not sure how you'll navigate that tricky subject once he's breathing again. But you'll deal with that later. Right now, you have a life to save. You pull your broken arm out of its sling and grab your other fist in front of his belly and squeeze. You try and try and try. His face is turning, well, not blue. Deep red? You guess because his blood is rust-colored. Sure, that makes sense. You yank one more time, your broken arm throbbing in pain. A huge glob of chewed hot dog launches out of his mouth like a cannonball. And the expulsion creates enough force in the other direction it causes you to actually lift him up into the air and accidentally suplex him into the mud behind you. You in turn go tumbling over him and the two of you are soon locked into an inseparable pinwheel of interspecies downhill mayhem. You roll and roll down grassy incline towards a nearby neighborhood towards a street. Luckily, you stop just short of the street, but Diamond's Neck lands around the sharp edge of the curb, and after flipping in the air once or twice, you come down around his face with your big ass. You hear a crack. Oh, Diamond? You slap his cheek a little. No response. He's not breathing. You check his mouth. Throat is clear of hot dog debris. Oh, God. This can't be happening. You look around, panic. This isn't what you need right now. All you wanted was a friend. You can't be held responsible for alien murder. You have to hide the body. You see a couple kids creeping out of nearby houses to see what all the commotion is. There's no time. You've got to find a bush or something. There. Over there looks like a little alien bushy thing. It's pretty small, but it'll have to do. You drag the vested shirtless carcass over to the bush. You dump the body in the bush and it's really not convincing. Looks like a dead kid was unceremoniously dropped on top of a small bush in a poor attempt to conceal a murder. You've got to come up with something better. Wait a minute, someone is standing behind you. <gasps> Hello, stranger. Don't worry about this little mess you've made. I'll take care of it for you. Oh, oh God. Oh no. <laughs> Oh. oh, oh, I feel so bad. <laughs> oh, that this is the worst ending. Oh God, I'm an alien murderer. Oh wow, that was. Oh, that that's a real downer of an ending right there. Oh God. Oh no. Okay, well. Aw. Aw. So, uh, I guess, uh, follow me on Twitter. Donate to my Patreon. Donate to my Ko-Fi. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs>
Now I'm really bummed out. Oh. Let's 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 see the good end again. Let's see the good end again cuz I don't want to end on that. That was that's terrible. Oh. Yeah, oh, I, ah, I just skipped right over it. Oh, now I feel even worse. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh. Ah, ah, I skipped up. Uh, uh, God damn it. Okay, well. We, we'll, we, we'll just pretend that's the canon ending, okay, everybody? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I didn't expect to go through so many feelings tonight with these two volumes. Oh, oh man. Okay. All right. Okay. Woo! Uh, yeah, the canon ending, yes. Oh, let me compose myself for a moment. Ah. Okay. Well, that I guess that will be it for the stream tonight. Uh, we almost hit two hours. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, so that will be it for me for tonight. Yeah, yeah, I know that was the first volume. There's still like, what, uh, 23 something total, I think. There's a lot. We're going to be doing this for quite a bit. Uh, next stream, uh, yeah, don't forget, next stream is Thursday night, same time, 8 o'clock. It's going to be a, a secret until then, but uh, it probably won't be as emotionally fraught as this one is because I, I, I don't think I can handle it, to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And, and, uh, it'll, be, it'll be a good time, I think. And, like I said, we'll, I'll do some, some testing with some different setups this weekend. Um, and I'll go live for that, because I kind of have to, to make sure I want to get everything going right. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get to Vicari, too. Vicari? Vicar? I'll just call him Vicari. I like that. It sounds like an anime. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of trolls I can't wait to get to. And, and yeah, like I said, we're gonna do all of them, so, uh, yeah. And I'll try to do at least one a week, so it'll be It'll, it'll be a while before we get through all of them, but we'll be going at, like, a steady pace, so that'll be pretty good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for coming by, everyone. I'm, I'm glad you were able to spend this evening with me and make friends. We did, I think we did a good job.